Ah, thank you. Um, you know, tracking down your birth mother can be a long process. It's, it's full of red tape, so don't be expecting too much too soon. Don't worry. I'm not going to waste my time on bureaucratic nonsense. You can do it all over the internet. Really? On, on the internet? Hmm. Lots of people have done it successfully. It'll be much quicker. Well, are you sure it's reliable? I mean, you don't want to be barking up the wrong family tree now, do you? Sorry. Well, if I go the official route, they'll want to send me for counselling and all sorts. Well, that's not such a bad idea. Oh, I had enough of that when I left the army. Never again. No. Nope. Internet's the way forward, trust me. Well, I hope you're right. You'll wait and see. <laughs> What's the matter? Nothing. Come on, what have you done to yourself? This is ridiculous. You can't even sit down and have breakfast with the rest of us. It's been like this since you've been home on and off. Is it getting worse? It's just seized up a bit. We need to start training again, loosen it up. Why don't you two take your toast into the other room and watch the telly, eh? Yeah. Hey, and don't forget, we're taking Colin to the barracks later this morning. Come on. Don't forget to take the picture. I won't. It's great. I'll hang it up in my locker. You better add. <laughs> they miss you. So, did you see the army doctor about your back? I told you. I didn't need to. I'm going to call the surgery. Just take me back to the barracks. It'll be all right. Not until I've had this checked out. You don't need checking out. I'm not going. Give me the phone. Give me the phone! I see. Like that, is it? I'm sorry. I thought we'd finish with all that. You shouldn't wind me up. You shouldn't lie to me. You don't listen. You treat me like a kid. And what would your mates at the barracks say if they knew that you bashed your own mother up, eh? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Right. I'm giving the orders round here. You're going down to the surgery whether you like it or not. You do it for me. For my peace of mind. Clear? Hello? Hello, can I speak to Jude, please? I see. It's quite urgent. Um, I know, but I need to speak to you urgently. It's Beth. Hello? Beth, I'm busy. I know, I'm sorry. I need to talk to you. Yeah, well, I'm snowed under. I don't have time to talk. Look, I've got loads of work to catch up on. Let's just speak later, OK? Just try and keep it together. That's what we've both got to do. Come and meet me here later. I want to see you, please. All right, but I'll have to be early-ish. Straight after morning surgery. OK, see you then. Bye. Right, bye. Uh, we've got an appointment with Dr Carlyle. Ah, oh, right. I'm afraid Dr Carlyle's overrunning, but, uh, well, you can see Dr Elliot right now, if that's OK. That's fine, thanks. OK. Um, if you'd like to go on through, his name's on the door. Right, you two, sit yourselves down and behave yourselves. All right? Yeah, Mum. I'm amazed he's sitting down. This morning, he ate his breakfast standing up. Now, that's how bad it was. So this is a recent injury, is it? Well, I noticed it when he first came home about ten days ago. He wasn't himself, you know, he kept having twinges. So, what did you do? He's in the army. It'll be the training. He was overdoing it, I bet. You know how they are. The army? That's very good. How are you enjoying it? He loves it. Oh, that's a good sign. Which regiment? Royal Midlands. He's training to be a fusilier. He's doing well. He's surprised himself as well as all the rest of us. Can you tell me what happened? I can't remember. I see. So when did you first get this pain? I can't remember. It just came on. Have you been to see your medical officer, get it checked out? No, it wasn't that bad. Who is your M.O.? 
The doctor's asked you a question. For goodness sake, do I have to do all the talking? Royal Midlands. That's Major Stanley Miller, isn't it? Yeah, man there? You really should get to see him when you get back. When do you go back? Today. Today? Well, you should be seeing him, not me. You're his patient. I wanted him to see a proper doctor. Believe me, Mrs McKinley, an M.O. is a proper doctor. I used to be one. It's a tough job. Well, they haven't done a very good job of looking after him so far, have they? Look, I think I should have a chat with Colin on his own. Would that be all right, Mrs McKinley? OK. Probably cramping his style, aren't I? I don't care as long as he's with a doctor. Give me the shark! Give me the shark! Let go of the shark! Thank you, thank you! Stop it! Stop it! Oh, what's going on? Give me the eyes! And here, this is your shark. Does the pain ever go down your leg? No. Just the lower back? Yeah. It's not that bad. She's just over top. Well, she's your mum. She's just doing her job. Is the pain constant or does it come in spasms? It's not there all the time. I just need a few painkillers for when it comes on. You know, you're painting a very different picture from the one your mum gave me just now. But who are you going to listen to? Me or my mum? Are you sure you can't remember what happened? No. Nothing particularly difficult you did on exercise that sparked it all off? Well, it's all difficult. That's the whole point. You're not making this very easy. I just need a few painkillers. I'm amazed that no one in your regiment has picked up on this. Are you going to give me something or not? I can give you a few to get you through today on condition that you go and see Major Miller when you get back. All right? All right? You're not in the army anymore, mate. I don't need to take orders from you. Got it? Give me that. For goodness sake, what's the matter? Sit down, boys. You're not going out there. Excuse me. I need a quick word with the doctor. Can you look after those for me? Thanks. Do I look like a babysitter? Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> he has a temper on him sometimes. He wasn't very helpful. I can't really make a diagnosis on the small amount of information he's given me. Well, you must have some idea what it is. I'd suggest that he's damaged muscles and ligaments around the vertebrae in the lower back. Non-specific lower back pain, we call it. But it's not serious. Well, he needs to look after it. Is he happy in the army? Oh, he loves it. He's doing very well. He's the best one at vehicle maintenance. Well, I've advised him to go and see his MO when he gets back. He should get to the bottom of it. I hope so. I can't trust him to look after himself. And he needs to control that temper as well. They won't stand for that. <laughs> it's been worse than that, believe me. Really? Oh, well, when he was a teenager, he was a handful. If he got into trouble with the police or at school, he'd come home and <laughs> lash out. Well, lash out? Are you? Oh, sometimes. I mean, it's tricky when you've got lads and they suddenly grow up and they think they've got the upper hand, don't they? Or they can do if you let them. Right. And you think he's put all that behind him now? <sighs> Since he's been in the army. Oh, yeah. It's transformed him. And me. <laughs> hey, I can concentrate on the two little ones. Right, well, I've prescribed a few mild painkillers until he gets to see his M.O. Sorry, that's the best I can do, I'm afraid. Thanks for your help, and I'm... I'm sorry it was so difficult. Thanks. All right. Hey, I want to work with you. Yeah. Well, let's get you back to the barracks and watch yourself getting in. More trouble. Babysitting isn't in my job description, is it? I just think not. <sighs> I must have a kind face then. I'll have to do something about it. Why don't we get a cup of tea? Go on. Thanks. Look what I found. This will cheer you up. Oh, that is beautiful. You have definitely got to go to Greece. I love it. We went there on our honeymoon. It was fantastic. Mm. It's the perfect place for you and Mac. Oh. 
Look at this, Mark. Isn't it beautiful? Are you going on holiday? Mm. I suggested it this morning. She needs a break. What about Marbella? A mate of mine's got a villa out there, right on the sea. All more cons, fantastic views. Yeah, the great golf course as well. Mac would love it. Oh, that sounds great. And there's a shorter flight as well. I mean, you don't want to spend too long on a plane with a baby, do you? Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. I wonder what state the body was in. I mean, if he lay there for eight years in the Bolivian desert, there can't be much left of it. Stop it! Don't think about the details. Well, I can't help it. It's doing my head in. The body might not even be Sean's. I'm useless at work. I can't concentrate. And I've got to go to evening surgery tonight. Oh! Look! Got your present. I don't want a present. Open it. To help you relax. Thanks. A crate of vodka would be more effective. Um, look, maybe I should move in with you. You know, for a while. You need someone to look after you. Well, that's a first. You look after me. It'd be a disaster. It wouldn't! What you need is someone to do the washing and the cooking, all the basics. And you'd be less stressed, then we could talk to each other whenever we needed to, couldn't we? I don't know, Beth. I can't even think straight. I'll come round two years later. I'll cook us a nice meal. You can have a relaxing bath. And then you can go to evening surgery, and when you come back, we can watch a film or something. Yeah, whatever you want. I've got to go. Thanks for this. Bye. See you later. At it again. You can't come in here without an appointment. I can come in whenever I want. Remember, look, I need some more of them tablets. The strong ones. I can't help you, I'm afraid. I think you can. It'd be better for you if you did, wouldn't it? You've got to stop this nonsense. It's ridiculous. Is it? It won't be nonsense when I tell the bigwigs about your nasty little habit, will it? It'll be very serious. Nobody will believe you. I want some tablets. I've got training tomorrow and I can't do it like this. It's got worse, hasn't it? I told you it would. Give me the prescription. You'll do permanent damage to your back if you carry on training. Is that what you want? A disability? Who is it? Dr. Mark Elliott from Riverside Surgery. Hello. Thanks for making time to see me. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry you find me in such a chaotic state. What can I do for you? I saw one of your patients this morning. He was on leave. Uh, McKinley, Colin. What about him? His mother was convinced he had a back injury and she persuaded him to come and see me. He obviously didn't want to come. Um, I examined him. He told me nothing. The way he was walking, he was obviously in a lot of pain, but he was covering up. I couldn't understand, so well, I referred him back to you, of course. I see. I was concerned. I wanted to bring it to your attention. Well, uh, thank you for going to such lengths. I'm sure a simple phone call would have sufficed. I was surprised that no one had picked up on it. You see, if he has injured his back, then he really should be suspended from training and sent for examination. Dr. Elliot, are you aware how long I've been practicing here? Oh, yes, sir. 
Then I'd appreciate it if you didn't lecture me on official procedures. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to imply... I was just concerned that perhaps he'd somehow fallen through the net. Is general practice not stimulating enough for you? You have to come snooping round the barracks looking for a bit of excitement. Oh, not at all. Yes, well, thank you for the information. Now, I'm afraid I have a meeting to go to. You know your way out, don't you? I'm sure you won't need an escort. Major Miller, are you there? It's Mark Elliott, sir. Are you all right? McKinley's been taken for treatment. I want to ask your advice before I report the incident. Could you spare a minute? It's not as bad as it looks. You must be in shock. You shouldn't really be writing a statement now. There's plenty of time for that. Oh, well, this is my letter of resignation. I intend to leave as soon as possible. You're resigning? Dr. Elliot, I have allowed myself to be bullied and intimidated by this young man. By McKinley? I passed him fit when he was unfit and gave in to his request for painkillers. This morning, I tried to refuse him. <laughs> this is the result. I don't believe it. You can see the difficulty of my situation. Well, I don't understand. How could you pass him fit? I mean, surely there was someone there who saw the injury when it happened. Didn't the NCO refer him to you? He was alone when the accident happened, mending vehicles. I was the only one who knew. <laughs> he was terrified that they'd declare him unfit for training. He thought he could intimidate me. <laughs> he was right. Well, you could have reported him for making threats. Of course, it seems very obvious to you, Dr. Elliot. But when you reach my age, you'll appreciate how difficult it is. When the powers that be are looking for any excuse to consign one to the scrap heap, one makes very different choices. You should have reported him for his own good. He could be left with permanent damage. I'm aware of that. But it was more important for you to protect your position. You may make that judgment. I, of course, had no idea how serious his threats would become. So, what are you going to do? I'm resigning. I told you, what you do is up to you. You're an eyewitness. But I would ask you to consider the damage to McKinley's prospects. This is ridiculous. I would also ask you to respect my wishes and allow me to resign quietly with my reputation intact. Your reputation? Isn't it your pension you're worried about now? I haven't worked hard all these years to retire in the midst of hearing scandal and speculation. So you're just passing the buck to me? Yes, that's right. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to finish this letter in peace. Disc. That's serious. I tell you, that's the least of his worries. 
cried on the phone when he told me what he'd done. I'm not surprised. This is about as serious as it gets. He's threatened and assaulted a senior officer. Who was drinking on duty? He told me Miller was half cut, swigging at the vodka. That doesn't excuse his behaviour. His father was a drinker. Colin can't stand it. He sees red. Even so, that kind of violent behaviour is inexcusable. It makes him a liability in the army. He could endanger other people's lives. You haven't reported him yet, have you? No. Well, Miller won't, will he? I mean, he'll be in big trouble if it all comes out. Mrs McKinley. Colin's ready to face up to his problem. He'll do anything. He told me. He'll go to counselling and he'll get support to help him change. Anything that you recommend, he'll do it. I promise you. That's not the point. Well, he needs to stay in the army. He feels he belongs there and he's never felt like that before. Not at school, not at home. <laughs> not even with the kids he used to knock around with. I know. I felt like that when I joined the army. It was like joining another family. Well, then... I'm not convinced he can change. I know he will. I guarantee it. I don't say that lightly. He's lucky to have someone like you standing up for him. Look, I said I'd go and talk to him. Time's getting on. I'll see you later. You're going to love this. I get chopping, preparations, everything, and this is going to take a while. Well, can't you give me a hand with this first? Come on, we've got to check them all. There's plenty of time for that. You should take it easy. I'll run you a nice bathy. Eh? Oh, for goodness sake, it's the middle of the afternoon. No amount of aromatherapy is going to calm me down. Just accept it. We're in a serious mess. Let's get into you. Nothing! If I don't keep busy, I'll go mad, that's all! You think I'm scum, don't you? No, I don't. I was scared. Were you? When I had the accident, yeah. I was fixing trucks. I slipped in some oil and fell into the maintenance pit. I laid there for ages. Well, why wasn't there anyone with you? I weren't supposed to be there. I used to go and work on the truck sometimes if I fancied it. Miller told me off for it when I went to go and see him. He was drunk. Like, properly drunk. He told me the army might throw me out. I couldn't believe it. There he was, out of his head. Telling me it was all over as if it didn't matter. Plenty more where I came from. You know that's not true. That's what he thinks. There was a system you could have gone through to get the right treatment. It didn't mean you'd be thrown out. It's not what he said. I was doing so well. Now it's all over, innit? I've blown it. It's nearly ready. Put the paper away now. Do you realise that we could get arrested at any moment? We need to be ready for when the police come. We've got to get our story straight and know our rights. Now, if we both say that we were acting in self-defence, we'll get lighter sentences. We were acting in self-defence. I mean, I was, defending you. That's obvious. Just calm down. We don't even know if it's shown. It could be anybody. And right at the moment, it's on the other side of the world, OK? Now, come on, food's ready. Are you going? I've got to get back, I'm sorry. Are you going to report me? It may come out anyway. Miller might do it. But will you? You need to think about what you can do outside the army. Make some plans. I've told you. I can't do anything. You're a good mechanic. You're a better one now than when you joined up. A bit more experience and training. You could have your own business. I don't want to. This is all I want. I'm proud of me. My brothers. My mum. I know I get the rages sometimes and all that, but if you tell me what to do about it, I'll do it. I'll sort it out. I will. You need to sort that out, whether you're in the army or not. You were in the army. You know what it's like. Please, I can't stand it going back home. I just need one more chance. I have to go. I 
I've spoken to Mac and we definitely like the villa, so um, would you mind giving your friend a ring and let him know? OK. I'm um, sorry, Kate, could you give me a few minutes? I've got a big decision I need to make. Well, what sort of a decision? Well, if I do the right thing, I throw at least three lives into chaos. And if you don't? Then I will have done the wrong thing, won't I? Ah. Well, I'll leave you to it, then. Hello, could I speak to the company commander responsible for Fusilier Colin McKinley, please? It's Dr Mark Elliott. I have to report an incident. I'm going to get some fresh air before evening surgery. This flat's doing my nut in. It's not the flat, it's you. No, it's you, actually. You're doing my head in. I don't think this was a good idea. And I don't need your Miss Sweetness and Light Act. I'll see you later. Jude! What? The body of a British tourist has been found in the eastern region of Bolivia. The man has now been identified and his body is being flown back to the United Kingdom. His identity will not be released until relatives have been informed. <laughs>